Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna be going over the Common UI tab list. Now, this tab list is a widget within the Common UI plugin, so we are gonna be utilizing Common UI. Now, it is in the name, but I'm just gonna disclose that anyways. But I do wanna go over just before we go into all the details, this video does take account that you do know how to set up the inputs, so you have set up the settings correctly to work with Common UI. Now, if you don't know that yet, I do recommend take a look at my Common UI guide. It is about an hour and a half long, but if you just watch the first portion, I believe it is between like 15 or 20 minutes, something like that, to set up the settings. That way you can understand all of the settings, all of the inputs. Now, if you already know all of that and you've already set it up accordingly, you could just move forward with the video. Now in this video, I'm gonna be going over the tab list. With that tab list, we're gonna be able to use the left shoulder and right shoulder buttons for a gamepad. And you could also, I guess, set it up for if you wanted to do like um, the up and down buttons, if you wanted to change it to different gamepad controls or keypad controls, you'll be able to do that whether it is vertical or horizontal. So uh, I'm gonna be going into explaining how to do all that functionally and then also display it to you as well. Now in this video, I'm gonna be using a PlayStation 4 controller. I'm just disclosing that I'm using this gamepad. Uh, if you're using other gamepads, try to use the buttons according to them. Uh, they're all roughly the same, but they all have little nuances. So just make sure you have the images accordingly as well as just um, using the correct gamepad buttons. So anyways, Let's get into it. So just to go over briefly on what the settings look like, again, I'm not gonna go into brief descriptions on what everything is, but I will just glance over and show you. So with every common UI product, obviously you need to turn on the plugin, so I'm not gonna just take the time to go into that, but let's go into project settings. The first thing is after you turn on common UI, you have to search for view, viewport and make sure you select the common game viewport and then it will make you restart after. Next, we're gonna go into common input settings. Uh, so you do have to create input data and also controller data. Uh, so this, you have to start by making a input action data table, which is also under, um, I think it's, shoot, where is it? Miscellaneous and then common UI input action data table. And then you create one of those. After creating these, you then have to create the buttons and specify which buttons and the name of them uh, which you want to create. So this is where we have the select, the back button, the tab left, and the tab right. And then I also add in the images of the brushes. This is also where you set the size of the brushes. That is also important. Uh, so for tab left and tab right, I have the 32 sizes, and then that is the input action. And then if we go back to settings, make sure that you create input data, which is a generic input data blueprint. This is where you make the click action and the click back button. And then this is where you select the data table and then the input or the row name that you want to pick. Afterwards, you have to create the controller data. And then from here, this is where you create the type of input. So whether it is mouse, keyboard, gamepad, touch, or whatever count is. And then you put in the name of the gamepad, display. And this is where you put in all of the brushes again for all of the buttons. Uh, so like the X button represents the face bottom button. And then for my left and right tab, I also have here. Also for the brushes, I put them to 150 because I'm gonna be using them in the UI. I want them bigger than 32. Uh, so just also make sure that if you are using this data for um, UI, just try to scale them up a bit unless you want them specifically small. Uh, and this is where you can change it as well. So. Going into that, make sure you then connect them into the controller data. Make sure gamepad is first if you are supporting gamepad. This is really important for UI so that um, the buttons aren't missing when you first start the game and you have a controller plugged in. Okay, so now let's go into the widget itself. So from here, we're going to now go into a new folder in widgets. 
Now there are two things to do with a tab list. So if we actually were to just type in common tab list, if you hover on top of it, it actually tells you that it works with a switcher. So this will only work if there is a switcher in the UI uh, or the same widget that the common tab is. So what I recommend using is the common tab list as just the header. And this is where you can actually make it modular so that it is for all your widgets. So whenever you add a tab list, you can just add this widget and you don't have to create one every single time. Um, that's what I recommend for all UIs. You always want to split it into things that you can reuse multiple times to save yourself time. So don't put a switcher directly into the common tab list. Just use it for the header and the buttons. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna create the header and then we're gonna create a, another widget that will have the switcher. So going into the tab list first, we'll go into here and we'll then type just, um, uh, let's just do like CUI or common UI and we'll do tab list. From here, the first thing we want to set up is the tab list functions. Uh, so what we want to do is let's turn on the auto listen for input. So once it's created, we do want to listen for the input. Now you don't want this turned on if when you create tabs, you want them disabled and you want the player to unlock them at a later time. So like if you want to show the tab, but it is in fact disabled, don't turn that on because otherwise they can move on top of it. And then if it then they can't actually see the page, but they can still uh, use the button to like hover on top of it. It will create some weird uh, interactions for the player. I mean, you could test it out yourself to see how weird it becomes, but basically don't do that. <laughs> so now let's set up the next tab and the previous tab. So we're gonna connect our data tables. And then from here, we want to select the next tab. So next tab is going to be tab right. And then previous tab is going to be tab left. So typically for English speakers, you read left to right. So left in this case is going to be previous and right is going to be next. Okay. Now let's go about setting up how to have buttons in our tab. So what we need to do first is we need to have something to contain everything. This is going to be our header. And within our header, we also want to display the tab right and tab left buttons. We want to have that visible to the player so that they are in fact able to see what buttons to press. So we're going to need to have a horizontal box. And within this horizontal box, we need the common action widget. And we want two of them. And for both of these, let's just hit the fill button and turn it to like 0 0.1. That'll be useful later. But as of right now, let's go ahead and rename these to the tab left. Oop, capitalize that E on accident. And then we'll call this tab right. These are where our icons are going to populate. And this is where we'll be able to see what buttons to go to left and what buttons go to right, depending on if the controller is plugged in or you're using a mouse. So with this, we're gonna hit the input actions. And then for tab left, we wanna do the exact same thing we did with the widget and do tab left. And then for here, we'll do the exact same thing. And we'll do tab right. And then, we need to have something to contain all of our buttons. So all of our buttons are not actually going to exist in this widget. We are gonna create them within the widget that requires tabs. Uh, that way we can utilize this multiple times and we don't actually have to specify how many um, 
tabs that have pre-existing. So we're going to go ahead and do, 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 do another horizontal box in the middle and just hit fill. We're going to make it a variable and call it container. Now let's go into our graph. From our graph, we're now going to delete this and we want to do specific common tab list functions. So we're going to do tab creation and tab removal. And what this means is that every time a tab is created, what we want to do is make sure it's added into our container. So whenever we have our container, we want to then add a child. And plug that in. And then we also want to move child. So every time it is created and removed, we're going to be able to add it to our container so that your tabs are always displayed correctly. And this is actually all we need to do right now for this tab list. Now we're going to go into making our default widget, uh, which we'll just call it our, um, our, our menu widget. We're going to do common activatable widget. We'll just call this WBP for widget blueprint and we'll call this, oh, autosave hit us once more. We'll just call it main menu. And from here, we're going to need our header, but first let's just throw down a canvas panel. Now this is only because I don't have any other type of widget currently. Uh, never stack canvas panels upon canvas panels. Try to do overlays or um, uh, like borders or, or things like that. Try to not stack too many canvases. And then from here, we're just going to grab a border and I'm just going to do this zero, zero, zero. And we're just going to make it black. Oh, that's, this is the wrong one. Hold on. Brush color to black. And then from here, I'm going to grab the header. Um, I call it tab list. And we're going to line it across the top and do like 20%. And then we'll just do zero, zero. Actually, let's do like 10, 10, 10, 10. Okay. So let's actually check to see if our buttons are working and being displayed. So let's go ahead and go into a third person character. We're going to create a debug one key. And from here, we're just gonna create a widget. We're going to make a main menu widget, add to viewport, get player controller, and let's set show mouse cursor, and then, oop, oh, lagged a bit, uh, game, no, no. UI mode only. That way we can see the mouse cursor and then we can also interact with it. So we hit here, press one. We got our icons. I move over here and sweet. So just like that, we're able to display the icons depending here. Now I, I do know we have the left and the right mouse keys. However, um, those are actually not going to work throughout this video due to the fact that um, keyboard is actually a little different compared to gamepad, and I'm not covering that as of this moment. I'm still doing some research on it, how to accurately portray the arrow keys. However, you can do like Q and E, and they work perfectly fine, but for some reason, arrow keys don't interact as well, and that's just a Unreal Engine difficulty with keyboards at the moment. But I'll do a video on that at a later time.
But now that we have that there, we need to now handle our buttons. We need to be able to have our tabs. And currently, we don't have that. So let's go ahead and do on construct. So it will delete these. And before we create any type of tabs, we're going to grab our tab list. And we actually need a switcher so that we can switch our tabs based upon the content within our switcher. And since we don't have that yet, what we need to do is set linked switcher. And it requires a common switcher. So let's go into our design. Let's do a common switch and throw that down. Let's go into full size and then let's drag this down to the 20. And let's also set this to 10 across the board. So now we'll have a container switcher here. So let's just type switcher. And we're just going to throw in some fake content for here. <clears throat> and we'll do just different colors for our images. Just want to get rid of the white. Uh, okay. So we got different colors all around. Perfect. Names are not as important. And we'll go into here where we'll plug in the switcher. And then now we need to create all of our buttons. But before we can create buttons, we need to be able to style them and know what type of button we're creating. So let's go back into our widgets. We're going to go into here, widget blueprint, type in button, click button base and select BUI button base. And then for all buttons, they for styles all require an overlay. Uh, so you need an overlay because it will set based upon what the button style that we create is matching. So from here, we're now going to create a new blueprint, new folder, and we'll call this style. And we'll just call it button style for the moment. I'm going to close it and reopen it just because I hate seeing the graph for no reason. Now let's set the normal base, normal hovered, and press to different colors. So let's go into tint. We'll do kind of like a brownish thing. I'm going to take that color for everything. Boom, boom, boom. And then now I'm going to darken the hovered to about here. Actually, let's do a little more. And then let's go to the selected hovered and then also. And then for this one, we'll darken it even more. And then for disabled, we'll just make it black. Okay. That looks good. And then from here, let's go ahead, grab a text, grab common text. Now you could also do a style for the text too. I'm not going to right now because um, I'm just gonna have the default, but you would go about doing the same thing as I did for the button. And then ooh, make this a variable. We'll call this text block. This is so that we can actually have the tab name will have common or custom event. We'll set button text. Go into 
set text. Hmm. Awesome. And then that should be all we need to do for our button as of now. Oh, actually, oop, we missed something. I lied. Go into the button. What we need to do is set a minimum width and height. This is so that we never have our buttons too small. So let's go ahead and do a minimum of 350. We're going to close this here. Uh, we shouldn't need this anymore either. But now that we have a button created, we can now start creating our buttons. But we also want to make sure that we only create buttons of the amount of indexes we have shown here, which are four. So what we're going to do is we're going to get child count. And then we want to do a loop. And then let's actually do minus oop, one and plug that in and delete. And the reason we're doing minus one is because it starts at zero and it doesn't start at the first index. Uh, so we want to make sure that we loop the appropriate amount. And then from here, we're going to grab our tab list. And to register any type of tab or create any tab, you have to do the register tab. You plug that in. And then from here, this is where we now set the button we created, which is button base. And then we actually need to get our switcher one more time. Let's actually give us a lot more room here because we need to do some stuff. We are going to want to get child um, index. Oh, oops. Get child at. And then we're going to plug this in. And I think we could actually promote this to a variable to make it a bit easier on ourselves because we're going to need that index a bit. We'll plug that in here. Plug that in here. And then we're going to need to be able to set our tab name. So upon this, what we need to do is go from, let's do to string. And a pen. Plug that in here. And we'll do tab and space. Okay. Uh, oh, actually, let's move that over a little in case we can do anything after the complete. And what this will do is this will now create all of the tabs, a total of four with the buttons. And let's click here and press one. Okay. So we don't have the names yet, but if we hit the left and the right button, it looks like nothing is happening yet. So let's see what happened. Um, oh, okay. That, that's what it was. Okay. Go into the main menu because I made a common activatable widget. We need to hit the auto activate. Uh, if this was like a user widget, you wouldn't have to worry about that, but that should fix it. Hit the tab button. Okay. Perfect. But it looks like our tabs aren't actually working as intended because they're still staying the same color. So let's actually see what's going on here. Uh, we need to set the name to the button. So let's see. Text. To text. Let's actually do pass the button base. And we're going to call that function for set button text. Oh, 
I didn't mean to do that. And we'll do that. Okay. That should set the names at least. But it looks like all of the colors are the same as of right now. Despite it actually working. So let's go back into our style. Looks like we probably did something wrong here. And it's probably because of all of the normal bases and normal hovered. Uh, let's see. The selected base. Let's go with um let's go with the darker color. Let's see if that actually changes anything. Okay, there we go. And like that, we now have a tab list. We have names for all of the tabs. Uh, you'll also notice that the buttons aren't actually centered. Uh, so let's, let's, let's quickly fix that. Let's go back to our tab list. And then for here, let's see. Let's go into where we create our buttons. I wonder if we could do container. Huh. Or maybe. There we go. You just have to center align it. There we go. That makes it nice and easy. Everything is centered. We have all of our buttons, and then we also have the icons that are being displayed as well. So with that, you now have a functional tab list that works with your gamepad. All right, so <clears throat> thanks for watching this. Uh... Thanks for tuning in. If you found this helpful, free, feel free to like, subscribe, join the Discord, all the self-promo stuff. It's great having you listening, and uh, have a good rest of your day.